All right. Well, welcome everyone and good morning. This is the very first in our new series for 2021, our Power Hour preview series. Power Hours are live training webinars that we do for our Affinity Insight clients. So if you're wondering what's going on with the logo at the top of the slides, that's what that is. It's our training membership program. And this is a preview of the sort of training we do for them. I think you're going to have a lot of good takeaways from it. We're talking about section breaks in Word today. So we named this Don't Let Section Breaks break you. I'm Danielle Davis Rowe. For those of you that I've not met before, a senior consultant here with Affinity Consulting Group. I always like to start these with a poll because I want to know where everyone's at, what their level of experience is. So I'm going to launch a poll within Zoom. So just give me an idea of where you're at with this. And then while you guys are answering that, I'm going to switch out of PowerPoint because I think we all see enough PowerPoints and open up a Word document. Now, this word document is a physician recruitment agreement. So whether you do those sorts of agreements or not really doesn't matter. The concepts that I'm going to be talking about when it comes to section breaks apply to any sort of document you might be drafting. Sections exist in Word whether we know it or not. Every brand new Word document automatically has one section. So you might not even know anything about sections, but you're using them. So if I open up a brand new Word document, control ends the keyboard shortcut for some of you who are wondering how I did that so fast. Down on my status bar, which is down here at the bottom of my Word window, I see that I'm in section one. Now Word doesn't show you this out of the uh, Get go. You've got to set it up that way. And I'm going to go ahead and end the polling. It looks like everyone's responses are in there. So thank you all for that. I greatly appreciate your feedback. To customize this, to show us where the section breaks are, I right click in a blank spot of the status bar. So down at the bottom of your Word document in this bar down here, right click and it will pull up the customize status bar menu. And second from the top is our section. Now mine is checked because I have it showing. If yours is not checked, click on it, it'll check it, it will show it, and it lets us know that, hey, I have one section in my document. Now, sometimes we need more than one section, which is where section breaks come in. We need more than one section whenever we need to change our section formatting. Now, that's not real intuitive. What is section formatting? Most people think of it as page formatting, our paper size our page orientation, our margins. So if you need to put a envelope in Word on your letter, that changes most likely your page orientation, right? Because most letters are portrait and our envelopes are typically landscape and it changes the paper size. I, you know, don't typically do envelopes in Word that are the same size as my piece of paper. So we do a section break for that. If we need to change the margins, you know, sometimes we need a three inch margin on the top of the first page because we're going to file it with a court or a recorder's office that puts that physical stamp up there. I don't see too many of those these days, but a lot of them still require it. To change the margins, we use a section break. Or, really big one, most common reason why I use section breaks are to change my headers and my footers for things like changing page numbering. So I'm going to close this new document and I'm going to go back over to my physician recruitment agreement here. You'll see at the top, we have a table of contents. Now, I know we had some questions about tables of contents, and unfortunately, we've only got half an hour today. So I don't have time to talk about how I got this automatically updating table of contents in here with just a couple of clicks. But Karen and I are brainstorming what we're going to do for our next few sessions. We've got our February one plan, but starting in March, we're going to base those around your guys guys' questions. So I think we're going to have content coming on that because that is a really good topic to talk about. So we have then a blank spot after it, and then we start the actual recruitment agreement. The first thing I need to do is figure out where this blank spot came from. Someone could have come in and they could have hit enter a lot of times, right? Well, how do people do that? They need to get something to start on a new page. They hit enter until it's on a new page. I could have some paragraph formatting that tells it that it needs to start on a new page, or I could have a next page break of some sort in there. The way that I figure out what's going on with Word, and if you used to be a Word Perfect user, think of this as your reveal codes. They work different than the reveal codes, but they're the equivalent 
in Word. Word simply just works different on the back end than Word Perfect. Hey, Danielle, yeah. can I stop you for a second? Absolutely. Um, we did have a couple um, just um, basic questions about how to get to custom format and where that bar is, is added. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So everyone should have the status bar down here. It's just this little bar. It normally tells you what page you're on in the document down at the bottom. It probably doesn't have things I have like track changes and this macro record button there. It might tell you how many words, things like that. You want to come to a blank spot on it. It also has your zoom slider over here normally. Click, right click on it. And that brings up the customized status bar. And you can see you can add all sorts of things there. I use it heavily. That's why I have so much on mine. So hopefully that answers everyone's question about that. But if not, Karen, let me know and um, we can dive into that in more detail. Um, absolutely. There is a question about not being able to see um, all the way at the bottom of your screen. I don't know if there's some way to, um, I don't know, reduce the size of the um, what you're sharing. Yeah, absolutely. Does this help? Does that oh, make it yeah. easier to see the bottom of it? Uh, let's double check. Is that uh, somebody sent me a message? Does that uh, is, can you all see it now? Yes, we're good. Okay, okay. fantastic. Sorry. Thank you Go for ahead. letting me know. Not of obvious course. to me that people can't see that. Right. right. So we just got the PowerPoint in the background in case anyone's like, whoa, what are all those graphics? That's simply the PowerPoint slide we were on most recently. Let me know if we have more questions, Karen. So to figure out what's going on here, we need to show our formatting marks, also known as paragraph marks, also known as show hide. If you've attended some of Baron Henley's webinars, he does a fantastic job. He calls it show hide. Where we're going to find that to figure out what's going on with the formatting, we're going to go up to our home ribbon. And in the paragraph group here, we have a paragraph mark button. Now, yours might not be in exactly the same place. I'm going to maximize my window and then bring it back down simply so you can see what it'll look like on yours. Normally, in the paragraph group of the home ribbon, it's up here in the upper right hand corner. So it's in the middle of the ribbon, but of the paragraph group, upper right hand corner. Now, when I make my window a little bit smaller, you'll see it drops it down here to the bottom. When I click on that, it turns on my formatting marks. Notoriously, it turns on the paragraph marks to show me where each paragraph is. But what's really important for what we're talking about today with section breaks is this tells me, hey, I have a page break right here at the bottom of this page. And that tells me how this started on its own page. A page break is something a lot of people are familiar with, but it is not a section break. And I can prove that to you by clicking above it. And we can see down here, I'm in section one. If I click below it down here in the agreement, in the physician recruitment agreement, I am still in section one. So we need to replace this with a section break. I am going to select it and delete it. Now, these can be a little tricky to select. If I take my cursor and I try to select it like I would any other word, it doesn't let me do it. Two ways to select it. If I come over into the left margin, you'll see my cursor changes from the little text cursor that I to a backwards arrow. Normally my arrow looks like if you see up here at the top, it moves from the left to the right here it kind of lines up along the right. When my arrow looks like that, if I click, it selects the entire line next to it. In this case, that is my page break. So I can select it that way and then delete it using the backspace or delete key on my keyboard. Or if I simply click next to it and I hold down the shift key on my keyboard and I tap my right arrow key on my keyboard once, that selects it as well. Not a wrong way between the two of those, but I know it's really frustrating. You try to use your mouse, click and drag, and it doesn't select it. So I'm going to click the delete key or the backspace key on my keyboard, and you'll see, hey, I deleted that. The physician and recruitment agreement is all on the same page now. To insert a section break, I want to come to the layout ribbon, and you'll see that I have under the page setup group on the layout ribbon, a breaks drop down. When I drop that down, I get two sets of options. My top three are different types of page breaks. If I insert the top one, I'll get right back to where I was. But 
I need to change some of my section format in here because what we're going to do is we're going to set up our table of contents to be numbered with Romanet, so little i, little double i. And then we are going to start our page numbering over on page one of the agreement. It'll actually be page three of the Word document, but normally our table of contents doesn't factor into our page count. Section breaks are how we do that. So, hey, Danielle. Yes. Can you just show again the entire page break, how you selected that? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to hit Control Z, which is undo. You can also use the undo button on your quick access toolbar. So to select the page break, either come to the left margin so that my mouse cursor looks backwards and click once, left click. That will select that line. Now you'll see if I'm up too high, it gets the line up there. It just gets whatever lines next to it or click to the left of it so you can see here that I have my cursor here blinking to the left of the page break. What I do is I hold down the shift key on my keyboard and while I'm holding down the shift key, I tap my right arrow key once. That will select my page break there. And then I either use backspace or delete on my keyboard. If anyone needs to see that again or has any more questions about that, just let me know. So to insert my section break, I'm going to go to the layout ribbon. I'm going to go to the break strap down and I'm going to come down to my section breaks. I want to talk to you about what the different options are. Now we're going to use a next page section break because that combines a section break and a page break. It's going to break my document into two different sections and it's going to put all the content that comes after it starting on a new page. A continuous section break is used when we don't want to start the content on the other side of the section break on a new page. So for example, those deeds or items that we have to file with the recorder or the court that requires a three inch margin on the top of the first page, but otherwise a one inch margin all around, we use a continuous section break near the top of the first page so that we don't have to figure out, well, what should be on page one versus what should be on page two. We let that naturally fall on page one versus page two. But that's not what we're doing here. We, in fact, want our agreement to start on its own page and have the table of contents on separate pages. The even and the odd page, I've never seen used in a legal document. Those are designed for people who are putting together print publications where you might have them bound and you want the page numbers to be on different margins and things like that. Now, we've got a lot of people attending here. So if anyone has a use for different even and odd page headers or footers, please put it in the chat and let Karen know because I've been searching for a good example for that for years, but I've never seen it used in a legal document. So I've never taught on those, but I'd love an example if you have one. So we're going to click Danielle, on. Yes. We have some folks that are not seeing the same format or headings as what you have. And so they're wondering what version of Word you're using today. Okay. So I have got the latest and greatest version of Office 365, also known as Microsoft 365. I'm not here to debate terminology on that. They rebranded a while ago. And I'm on a little bit faster update channel than the typical person. The buttons are all in the same place since uh, about as long as I can remember with Microsoft Word. So your button should be in the same place. The icons just look different. With 2019 and 365, they decided to modernize all of the icons. And so they look different, but you should still be able to go to your layout ribbon, page setup group, and go to the break strap down. The image next to break simply looks different and the image next to all of the options here should look different. Now, if someone's not seeing it on the layout ribbon, page setup, break strap down, let me know, Karen, but it should be in the same spot for everyone. They've not moved that. I think it's been there since they rolled out the ribbon interface way too long ago. I remember that being traumatizing for everyone, dating myself there. I'm not as young as I used to be, but <laughs> should be in the same spot. So we're going to do a next page section break. When I do that, you will see that it inserted the line, but it's over here. It's part of this paragraph. And sometimes if your paragraph ends farther over, closer to the right margin, I'm simply going to enter some random characters here so you can see what happens if I enter the right number of them. It can disappear. It's really hard to see. Sometimes you can't see it at all. So if you ever insert a section break and you can't see it, or if you're looking for things like page breaks and section breaks and you're driving yourself crazy, you can't see them, click at the end of your paragraph, hit return, 
that will put it in its own paragraph and allow you to see it much easier. A lot of times I find that they are just hiding in the right margin and I can't even see the first couple of pixels of that line. So just a heads up there on that. Now I have a next page section break. When I click on the top of it, section one, I come down to my next page to my physician recruitment agreement, section two. And just a heads up there, sometimes the status bar takes a moment to update to show that I'm in section two. So if you click down there and it doesn't immediately update to section two in your second section, take a deep breath, give it a moment. Depending on what update I have from Microsoft, sometimes it takes several seconds. Right now, mine's updating really fast. I'm really happy with it, but I'm sure by the time I get the next office update, it'll be a little bit slower again. Now, to insert my page numbering, I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so we can see the document a little bit better. And I'm just gonna double click where my footer is. That's gonna open up my footer. Now, there's half a dozen different ways to open up your header and footer in Word. I simply like double clicking, so that's what I use. Once I've brought my footer up, because I have multiple sections in my document, it's letting me know what section I'm in. So I'm in footer section one. If I only had one section in my document, it would not specify section one there. It would simply say footer. To insert my page number, I'm going to go up to my header and footer ribbon, only available when I'm in the header and footer. If you're in the body of the document, you won't see this. Now, there's half a dozen different ways to insert a page number. I simply think this is easiest. I'm going to go to page number here, and I always go to current position. The reason for that, if I were to pick bottom of page and I had some content in my footer, maybe I had a doc ID for my document management system. Maybe I had a spot for my client to initial. Maybe I had the name of the client, the name of the document. If I pick bottom of page, it's going to replace everything that's in my footer, and I never want to risk that. So I always pick current position. Then I pick plain number. Now, I want this to be centered. Most of the time, my page number is centered. Not always, but most of the time. And I want it to be a Romanette. So once I insert it, I'm going to format it the way I want. So I'm going to center it. For anyone who's curious how I did that so fast, Control-E is the keyboard shortcut for center. You could, of course, click on the center button on the home ribbon or go into your paragraph dialog. However you center things is fine. I'm a big fan of keyboard shortcuts. Then I'm going to tell Word to make this a Romanette. So I'm going to go back up to my header and footer ribbon and go back to that page number drop down here. And I'm going to go to format page numbers. When I do that, my top option is how do you want it to look? By default, it's my regular one, two, three. But down here, I have my Romanettes. I click OK. And now I've got a Roman numeral, little I, so Romanette, right? Kind of geeky term there, not too many people know that. And my double little I there. Then if I scroll down to my physician recruitment agreement, I get a number three, which is not what I need. First thing, whenever we are modifying our header and our footer in a section that's not our first section, so we've got a section break here, we need to cut the link between our sections. So I said we need to have a section break whenever we want our headers and footers to look different. By default, even though I put in that section break, Word ties them all together. They call it link to previous. If I click down in this footer, and you'll see it says section two here because I'm in section two, on the header and footer ribbon is this link to previous button, and it's darker gray. It looks like it's been depressed, like I clicked it and it's stuck in. It also tells me here that it's the same as the previous one. If I make a change here, so let's say I decide I'm just gonna delete this and start over. If I hit delete here and I've left that link to previous, it deletes it in the prior section. Control Z, I'm gonna undo that. First, I wanna click on link to previous here. Then it tells me it's no longer the same as previous and I could delete that three or add any other text I want to here and it doesn't affect my footer in the prior section. Now I'm gonna bring that three back so we can see a few different things there. But I wanna let you know why it does that because it's really aggravating when you go change your header and your footer and you're like, oh, I have to remember to link to previous. 
The reason for that is sometimes we use section breaks for a different reason. And some documents I work with have 50 section breaks in them, all for very good reason. It's very intentional. Not your typical legal document, but some of them have special needs. They have a lot of exhibits in them. And maybe we need to change something else, right? Maybe half of our exhibits need to be landscape and the other half need to be portrait. So we've got all these section breaks in there for that. If we wanted to keep our headers and footers the same, despite needing that section break, if they weren't automatically the same and I needed to go in and update them, I'd have to go into every single section to make the update. And that would be a huge headache. So that's why it defaults to link to previous. Very valid reason for that, but it's really aggravating when most of the time we are putting in section breaks to change our headers and footers. So step number one, after we've inserted our section break, header and footer ribbon, unlinked to previous, it's no longer dark gray, it's no longer depressed. I can change anything I want to in here now. Now, to get this to start over on page one, because this is page one of the agreement, I'm gonna go back up to my header and footer ribbon, back to my page number dropdown, and back to format page numbers. When I click on that, my one looks perfect. That's just how I want it to look here. If I don't want to continue my numbering from the previous section, which is what's going on here, I've got one and two from a table of contents, section one, and then section two of the document starts on page three. So it's continuing for previous section. It's always gonna default to that. I wanna tell it to start over at one. So I'm gonna change this toggle here to start at, and it defaults to one. If you had some reason why you didn't wanna start at one, you could absolutely change that there. Not sure I've ever actually seen a need for that in a legal document, but we can start at one there. So I'm gonna click okay. And now this is one, this is two. And if I scroll back up, I've got my Romanet two and my Romanet one. Now something I wanna make sure that you're aware of as I scroll around, if you look at my header and we're not doing anything with the header in this example, we've only got half an hour total to do all of this. My header is still same as previous. I have to separately unlink my header and my footer. So I need to come into the header if I'm making changes there. In this document, we don't have a header, but if we did, I would need to come up header and footer ribbon, unlink to previous up there. Danielle. Now, yes. Um, can, is it possible to make your screen bigger without going full screen? There are some folks that would just like to see it uh, a little bit bigger. The Word document itself, I can make it bigger easily. I can't make the buttons bigger real easily in the middle of the webinar, um, but the Word document itself, I can. Right. I didn't know if um, inside the outside edges of your document itself could, could scroll bigger without taking over the whole space again, without maximizing. Oh, I don't yeah, know if that yeah, will help people or not. This a little bit yeah. bigger. Is mm -hmm. that what you're looking for? Yeah. Yep. And then I'll keep it from the bottom since people have trouble seeing it at the bottom. All right. Does yes. that look better, Karen? I, I think so. I hope okay. so. Thank you. Fantastic. All right. The last thing I want to show you guys is what if I don't want a page number on page one of the agreement itself, which is actually page three of the document. Because this is page one of a new section, I can come into my header and footer ribbon and check the box for different first page. And it will give this section a different first page. Now you'll notice this says over here, first page footer, section two, and now it says same as previous. The different first page header and footer are linked to the prior section. So if we needed to make changes from one section to another, we have to cut the link again. Moral of today's Power Hour preview is cut the link, cut the link, cut the link. When in doubt, cut the link. But here you'll see that I've got Romanet two, Romanet one. It didn't enable the different first page up there no number than number two. So lots of different things we can do with headers and footers and our page numbering. It's all dependent on section breaks, enabling a different first page if we need something different there, and then going into our page number formatting. So I know we've only got about five minutes left. I'm sure you have lots of questions, Karen. I wanna make sure we have a chance to answer as many of those as possible. Or 
that we can plan future previews based on those. And I've got one last poll for everything while Karen's looking through all those questions. I would love to know if everyone had a chance to learn something from this. I hope you have at least one takeaway, if not a lot more, because section breaks are such a headache. When I was practicing law, they were the bane of my existence. Them and table of authorities, I hated them both. I never really understood them. So I'm glad I have this job where I can help people with them. All right, thank you all for responding to that. I really appreciate your feedback there. Karen, do you have any other questions that we can answer potentially in the last couple minutes we have here? Absolutely. Um, so the first one, uh, Leah asks, when I've used a page break, it changes the first line of the following page left margin. She's wondering what causes that. Okay. So sometimes when we insert those, it screws up the formatting. So it depends where exactly you're clicked when you do it, what the formatting is for the paragraph in front of it, what the formatting is for the paragraph behind it. My favorite feature in Word is styles. And we don't have time to talk about styles in depth, but I use styles to control all of my formatting. So my trick for that is I use styles for that and then I can readily fix the formatting with just a couple clicks of a button. So Karen, that might be something we want to talk about in a future Power Hour preview to, it won't necessarily fix that problem, but it'll lessen the headache it caused and makes it really easy to fix that formatting from it. Okay, great. I will write down styles as well. Um, Margaret's wondering, um, with continuous section break, what shows on the bottom where section XX quote unquote is? Okay. So if I put in a continuous section break, let's just put that in at the top of this document here. So let's say I need different margins or something up here. So I'm going to click someplace where I've got some content that's going to be on the first section, but it's going to be near the top of the document. I'm going to go to layout breaks and I'm going to go to continuous section break. And so when I am clicked, what is essentially below the continuous section break, you'll see I'm in section two here, even though I'm on page one. And if I click to the left or above it, it shows section one. Hopefully that answered the question. If not, let me know, Karen. Karen, you are on mute. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yes, uh, so far it looks like it did. Um, it does. So here's another one. Um, Marianne is saying that she would love to know why Word is automatically saving backups to Word when she's not asking for a backup. Um, and she's tried to stop that. And um, it may not be on point here, but that is a question that's hanging out there as well. Absolutely. We can definitely help with that. Write that down and we'll make sure we okay. help her with that if we don't build that into a future session. That sounds great. Uh, let's see. Is there a place where Word shows a saved doc with no new changes, similar to the WordPerfect unmodified designation. Well, let's get some more information about that and help that person uh, later. So let's follow okay. up with them afterwards. I wanna get a little bit better understanding of that one. Sure, that sounds good. Um, let's see. Um, what about deleting section breaks in column formatting? Um, this is always an issue when drafting cover letter slash signature blocks. Yeah, so that might be something that we want to address in a future one for people who are interested in more on section breaks. We can't cover everything in the full 30 minutes, but yeah, when you go to delete a section break, whether it's for columns or other things, it can cause a real headache. So we might want to consider that for a future one simply because we've only got a couple minutes left and I, I would not do it justice to explain that in two minutes. Of course. Um, how about with a different first page, it removes my line numbering and logo just on that one page of my document. How do you fix that? Okay, so that we would need to copy and paste from the second page back into your header or footer on the first page. Because line numbering in the logo, I'm assuming the logo, but line numbering is always done in the header or the footer to bring that up. And when we tell it to be a different one, it gives you a fresh one. And the only way to get it back is to copy and paste it from the second page um, back to the first page. Okay, I think that that is 
it as All far right. as goes, I think, I'm sorry, there's one more. If I have a continuous break and later have a page break, if I delete the page break, my continuous break becomes a page break that now needs attention. Is yes. there a way to avoid that? I think we should definitely schedule a follow-up one on more advanced things with section breaks. Put that in with the other question we had and help okay. everyone with that because those are definitely headaches. We just, half an hour is not enough time for all the <laughs> section break love that we would like to address. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, I think that's it as far as questions go today. Okay. Um, but of course, um, please, I, I know that there are some that are coming into the chat as well. Um, I will absolutely grab those and um, we will either connect with you personally um, or we will make sure that it's part of the next session um, for advanced. So thank you everybody. Um, Danielle? Yeah, so I wanna thank you guys all for attending. This has been a fantastic kickoff to our new series for 2021. As I thank you for attending, I wanna let you guys know that you are able to get a seven day free trial of Affinity Insight Plus, where we do a lot of power hours like this. A lot of them are longer, some are shorter on very specific topics. And I'm gonna give you an idea of what all that entails in case you're interested in not waiting a full month for our next session <laughs> on this. So we do these live training webinars, we call them power hours. Some are 30 minutes, some are 60, some are series. It just depends on the topic. Now, it's just like we did today. We have more time built in for questions and answers. And I give everyone a copy of the exercise that I'm working on. So you have the exact document I'm using to follow along. And you get quick reference guides that are step-by-step -step instructions with screenshots covering all the key points from it. And 97% of our attendees who have given us feedback have said that they have learned something that will make their job easier. Easier. So they really are helpful for the people who are joining us for them. The quick reference guides that you get as a Affinity Insight Plus member look like this. Now, this one actually has more pages to it, but you can see very simple, not a lot of text to read, lots of annotated screenshots. And right now we have over a hundred of those available. And then we have over a thousand on-demand videos available to all of our members on over 30 different software programs. They range in length from as little as two minutes to about an hour. And this is just an example of some of our word videos here. I couldn't fit them all on one screenshot for you guys. But so if you're looking for on-demand content to help you with this sort of stuff down the road, definitely worth checking out. It's also a full-blown learning management system. So you can make everyone in your firm or your organization a member. You can upload your own custom content. You can create custom courses, assign that to people and track their progress. And Affinity Insight Plus comes with the current version of all 14 of our legal specific software manuals, which can be really helpful to refer back to. So our attendees all love it, say they're amazing, good investment of their time. Now, I do wanna let you know, if you decide to sign up for the, pre the free trial, it is going to require you to enter your credit card. It's $200 a month. If you cancel in the first seven days, you will not be charged. But I just wanna let everyone know that you do need a credit card to sign up for the plus free trial. And if you guys have any questions about any of this, anything we covered today, things to cover in the future or the Affinity Insight membership, feel free to email me, ddavisrow at affinityconsulting.com or Karen, I know you guys all have her email address. Thank you guys so much for attending. And I look forward to seeing you next month at our next preview, which is going to be on February 11th and be covering word collaboration and security. Awesome. Thank you, Danielle. Thanks everybody.